Today's video should have been all about the big shallow and the new fish. Going to the shop, buying them, catching them, releasing them into the aquarium. Wow moment. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen. I decided to wait a little bit longer. Yeah, it was a painful decision. I think it's been almost three weeks since we first filled up with water. And I've also been dosing beneficial bacteria every single day. So technically, I think the aquarium is cycled and ready for fish. But we're still dealing with a little bit of this cloudiness in the water. So the Big Shallow is definitely testing my patience and your patience as well because we all want to see fish in here. But I think it was the right move to just wait a little bit longer because it would be a shame to go to the shop now, buy the fish, add them in here and just not really be, being able to see them properly because of the cloudy water, you know. Nonetheless, today's video is still going to be very, very exciting because we've been so busy focused on the hardscape, on the planting. We haven't really spent any time or any attention on the equipment and what it takes to run this beautiful aquarium. Yeah, so in this video, I want to do a quick rundown of the equipment. It's actually not that much, it's quite simple. I want to take a look inside the cabinet and we're also going to upgrade the cabinet with some new equipment. And I've ordered something online that's going to upgrade the whole immerse section and take it to the next level as well. Yeah, I think it was the previous video, the planting video, but maybe also in the hardscape video. Anyway, there were a few people in the comment section saying that I should buy this gadget. And I'm super hyped about this. Um, we have ourselves a mist maker. So I already saw these previously under the ADA brand name Dua Dua. But they were quite expensive, like 60 euros. So then of course I went to Amazon. Amazon always has things very cheap. So I found this one for like 20 or 25 euros. I'll put a, I'll put a link in the video description. So I never used a mist maker before. But I think that's really going to take the whole immerse section to another level. So let's just stop talking, let's get this thing installed, see what it looks like. So I just read the instructions and ideally this thing should be like 5 centimeters below the water level or something. So I want to hide it somewhere in this gap over here. So I think we can put it there and just put it on like a little platform so it's just below the water surface. Okay, I think we're good. You can just see it just behind these leaves. Doesn't want to focus. Doesn't matter, let's just switch it on and see if it works. Okay, that is sick. Look at this guys. We have some proper mist. That really reminds me of those like early mornings when you walk past the lake and there's this mist on top of the water. I don't think this is something that I'll keep on, keep running 24-7. Maybe only when the lights are on. But I think if, even that. Maybe just something you know, when you have some guests over and you really want to impress them with your layout. Or if you want to make some really cool b-roll like this one. I love it. Thanks to everybody who suggested in the comments that I should buy it. Really happy with that. So next up, let's do a quick rundown of the equipment. Let's start with the lights. This is the Skylight Hyperspot L. I think it comes in three different sizes. So you have one with like four spots, you have one with six spots, and this is the biggest one with eight spots. This is by far my favorite light for these big open top tanks, especially if you want to hang the lights from the ceiling. They just look really, really good, really sleek. It's very powerful also. I think I currently only have it on like 30 and 50%. There's two channels like warm white and cold white. It is an RGB light, but there's only two channels. So I think one channel is on 30% and the other channel is on 50%. Okay, then in terms of equipment inside the aquarium, we just saw the mist maker on that side. On this side, I have a small skimmer. So this right here is the Oase Crystal Skim 350. I think it's a new product from Oase. It hasn't been released that long ago. Yeah, quite a nice surface skimmer. Uh, what I like about it is that it has two separate modes. So if you remove the skimming portion, you can see um, there's a plus and a minus on there. So if you put it back on and then you twist it this way, it's plus. If you twist it that way, it's minus. So let's open it all the way up. So this is the strongest setting. And if you push it back down again, twist it to minus. This is the lowest setting. If you remove this floating portion, there's a little grill. And inside the grill, there's just a small sponge. That's it. Super simple, but it works quite well. I don't have any livestock in here just yet. Um, but this doesn't suck up any fish, but it might suck up some shrimp. So that is a bit of a downside. But besides that, it's a pretty good skimmer. Then on this side, we have the filter inflow and outflow. These are the plastic pipes from Aquario. I think it's called the Neo Flow. 
really like this set basically because you can cut it to size and so this is a shallow tank it's only 30 centimeters high so if you want a glass skimmer it doesn't really fit here it's basically it's either too big or it's too small so with these pipes you can just cut it to size and i can cut the intake to yeah basically just exactly where i want so that's nice i like the small skimmer on the outflow it just helps with the surface scum ideally once this gram is recycled and we don't have so much surface coming anymore i would like to remove that skimmer over there and just rely on this small skimmer here that'd be nice but of course the inflow and outflow is attached to a filter which we have inside the cabinet this is the oasa biomaster 850 thermo now if you go back on my youtube channel to some older videos from like maybe half a year to a year ago i have some videos about this filter basically where i was not really happy with it it's making a lot of noise it was blowing a lot of air into the aquarium and I was also using CO2 at the time, so it was really not really helping me. Um, that's also why we have these foam pads, because we're very noisy, but right now it's actually super quiet. I barely hear it. So I don't really need this anymore, to be honest. Yeah, we have the filter, we have some products from Seachem, and then behind that we have the power supply with the power strip and all these sockets. Then moving on to the middle compartment, this one is basically just storage. On the bottom we have my bucket, my mayonnaise bucket with uh, hoses, sponges, all the kind of things that I use for cleaning. My water test kit, some foam mats, and then this device right here is quite interesting. This is the Intaco controller. This is a very smart device that I'm not really using properly, but today I want to change that. We're going to bring it back, use it properly. Right now it's only controlling my lights, but with this you can also attach two uh, fertilizers. It has two pumps. You can also check CO2 levels. I'm not using CO2 at the moment, but you can check it. And you can also check the temperature inside the aquarium. So super handy device. Today we're going to bring it back. And then on this side, <laughs> more storage. Uh, we have some boxes. Yeah, with a lot of stuff. Behind the boxes, we also have my CO2 set that I used to run on this aquarium. Yeah, right now we're not using CO2 anymore. And also behind this, we still have the co2 reactor that i'm also not using anymore so we can remove this place it somewhere in storage where i'm not going to be able to see it anymore it's not going to be in the way so we can just proper properly pimp this cabinet because we need space for something else and that something else is this box right here this is the epson auto top off and i think this is going to like make my life a lot easier so basically the story here is that with the big shallow i get a lot of evaporation it was already pretty bad with the first version the iwagumi but now with the second, this new layout, we also have this water dripping system. And I think the evaporation got even worse. So that was really starting to bug me. And then literally like a few days ago, F-Zone reached out to me and said, Hey Mark, would you like, would you like to try out our new auto top-off system? I was like, yes, that's what I need. So they sent this over, of course, sponsor, they didn't pay for this product. And today we're going to install it, test it out. Super curious. Yeah, so we're going to install that auto top-off system later in this video. But to be able to do that, I think I have to apply a little bit of DIY to this cabinet just to make sure it works. And I want to do a few more DIY things. Uh, first thing being with this filter, the Oasa filter. I don't know if you guys have seen the uh, Oasa Scaper line cabinets where they, they have this pull-out drawer where the filter actually stands on. So it's much easier to do the maintenance. I want to see if I can build something like that myself in this cabinet. I think I have a pretty good idea for it. And another thing I want to do is for the Intaco controller. If I want to use it properly and also use the filter pumps, I need to be able to raise it. So I think I want to have it somewhere here. So in order to do that, we have to uh, yeah, do a little bit of DIY. So that's everything that I've planned for this video. So let's go to the local hardware store and see if we can find everything we need for this DIY project. So just a heads up, my DIY skills are not very good. So don't expect anything fancy in this video. Now my idea was to get these drawer sliding type of things and simply attach them to the bottom of the cabinet and attach the other side to a platform made from wood. Sounds easy and should work, right? So I bought that and I also found these wooden holders that I thought would work well for the Intaco controller. First thing I did when I came home was cut that piece of wood in half because I want to make two of those slide out platforms. One for the filter and one for the reservoir of the outer top of pump. Next I went ahead and attached those sliders to the floor of the cabinet and to the platform. But then I found out that my idea wasn't going to work with these particular sliders. So I had to go back to the hardware store and buy some new ones. I found these grey ones and they work much better. The sliders were 8.50 per set and a piece of wood was 10 euros. So the total cost for just one of these slider platforms is less than 15 euros. 
For the water reservoir, I'm using a UNS 30 cm cube, but you can use anything that holds water for this purpose, of course. Next up is to prepare those holders for the controller. So I bought two of them and I just took a little bit of black spray paint and gave them a few layers with that, just so it matches nicely with the cabinet. After the paint was dry, I just mounted them to the side of the cabinet and placed the controller on top of it. And now we have more than enough space for these big bottles of fertilizers, so I'm going to add the Masterline MPK and the Micro. And with the controller we can make a schedule for when and how much fertilizer we want to add. Now we just need to get the fertilizer in the aquarium, and for that I'm using these acrylic pipes from Aquario. With a little bit of heat you can bend these in any shape you like, so I went for a simple 90 degree bend. Then it was just a matter of attaching them to some silicone tubing and connecting everything to the controller, and that was that part of the automation done. Then all that's left to do is set up the auto top off. This was surprisingly simple. The system comes with a magnetic sensor that you can place anywhere you like. And for now I'm going to place it right where it's perfectly visible, just so I can keep an eye on it. Same goes for the hose for the pump, and then the pump goes in the reservoir, and that's it. So that was just a quick recap of this DOI project. I wish it was that quick in real life as well, because it took me a lot longer than I anticipated. But it's done and I'm really happy with the end result. You can actually see a little bit of smoke behind the aquarium there coming from the mist maker. So the wazer filter is now on this slide out platform. When I disconnect the hoses there, I can actually pull it out, push it back in for easy maintenance. Another thing I did is I mounted the power supply for the controller to the side of the wall, just to make it a bit more organized, a bit more safe. And then on this side we have the controller with the two fertilizers. So they are now calibrated and every day 2 p.m. Um, the controller will pump a little bit of fertilizer in the aquarium. And then we have the water reservoir for the auto top off. Super sleek. I'm very curious how long it's going to take to, yeah, to drain this 30 centimeter cube. How much, how much water will evaporate in like a week time. Let's keep an eye on that. Oh, nothing actually changed here on the left side. We still have a huge mess. We still have a lot of boxes. I'm going to keep it this way. I need my storage space as well, you know. I think everybody has some ugly storage space in their house. Then we have the auto top off. So we have the sensor. So there's like a high and a low on the sensor. And the water level sits exactly in the middle. And once it drops to the low, the sensor will activate the pump, push the water back in. From now on, the water should always be at this level. So I'm really curious how that's going to go in the next few days, weeks. I have to say I was a little bit nervous because yeah, what if the sensor fails and all of a sudden it's like overflowing the aquarium, but I don't think that's going to happen. I was also quite surprised by how cheap this auto top off system actually is. I'll put a link in the video description and I have a discount code for Fzone as well, which I will also leave in the description. Definitely check that out. And then lastly on this side we have the, uh, the acrylic pipes for the fertilizers. This is the micro fertilizer, this is the MPK fertilizer. And I've just attached them to the side with some, uh, some suction cups. And then they go all the way down inside the cabinet. And the last thing I also did is I added the temperature sensor for the entire controller. So this one is now checking the temperature. And I can see what the actual temperature is inside the aquarium with the Intaco app. To be honest with you guys, I'm actually really happy that I managed to do all this DIYing before the fish got here. Because if I had to do all that while the fish were already in the aquarium, you know, the drilling, the making noise, the banging against the walls. Like the fish would be super stressed as well, you know. So I think it was a good call to wait with buying the fish. But um, I think we're really getting there. I did a large water change yesterday and the water is still quite clear right now. So next week we're adding the fish for sure. Let's not wait any longer. Let's just do it. No more delays. Next week, fish in here. Promise. That's the end of this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to smash that like button. See you next time. Take care.